might help if I took put my we shall start over. Hi there. Welcome back. A few videos ago, I told you I had a miniature purse or tiny purse collection. And for some reason, these little tiny purses call to me. And so I'm going to share a little bit of my collection with you today. And I'll go back over the ones I've already showed you in that other video, but we'll start with the new ones. So this one here, you can see that. It's got a hard shell on it. It's um, celluloid or plastic. I don't think it's Bakelite. It opens up with little gussets there. It even opens further. There's another little pocket. So there's one, two, three, four total little pockets. Um, fabric on the inside. I've made it into a necklace. You know, I'm not going to remove it for the video, but it didn't come like that. So I have a couple of theories about what these little bags were used for and let me know what you think because I could be really wrong on this but one of them is for a rosary possibly one of them is for possibly to carry a few coins for the offering at church maybe they were given to children I have no idea they're just so tiny in Paris I saw several examples of these small purses and this was just one of them that I, I picked up and I really love it and I will probably keep it forever because it is so cute. And then I have this one which also I bought in Paris and it's sort of a souvenir necklace for me. I made it into a necklace with a little Eiffel Tower there and a little French coin and, and I added the decoration on the front. So it was basically just a, a mesh, little mesh bag and on the back there is actually a ring and so it it was meant to be hung onto something i'm thinking it might be part of a, a, a chantelaine i'm sure i'm saying that wrong but it's a chain that had different things hanging from it um again i don't know what it was used for maybe a rosary maybe a few little miscellaneous coins it is um it is great. I had I had a couple of these. This one I kept and then I made a necklace and sold one of them. And it is um, two and a half inches long and one and a half inch wide. I don't know where I got this one here. It is some sort of fabric. It's got a really neat uh, detailed clasp on it. And it's a it's a twist locker called a kiss lock design. And inside it's just you know it's hardly big enough for a quarter. Just a teeny little thing. I added the little bling on the front. I also made this into a necklace. I haven't been wearing these much lately, but I've just kept them. I keep them, I hang them on a little hook in my in my workroom. This one here is a little like mother of pearl shell, almost like a locket size. Inside I put a little heart, but it didn't, of course, come with that. It just opens up. I don't even think a quarter would fit in there. I'm not sure. This one I showed on the last video. It's just a little leather or a goat skin keychain. Uh, it opens up. It's got some stuffing inside of it that's that's been there for a long time. It's yellowed. And uh, again, I don't know its purpose, but it was on a keychain, so you're supposed to carry something in it. I also showed this one on the last video, and it is probably a souvenir. It opens up. It's made of leather. has some gussets on the side. This is my little briefcase clasps or the latches actually work and it is a business card holder and I, I keep my uh, get out of jail free card in there and these last two are uh, miniature saddleback leather bags they made these and gave these away at the meet and greet that we had we had two before the pandemic 
And there was a third one scheduled. It never happened. They gave these out to the attendees. It was part of our goodie bag. And so let's just take a look at this. It's it's the um, it's one of their satchels. It's a replica of one of their satchels. It has gussets on the side. It has straps all the way around, tiny little buckles. It even has a tiny little logo on there. Very detailed. I'm not going to open it up. Um, it's got even got a little pocket here in the back. I actually took this bag with me when I went on a trip overseas because I was traveling very light and I didn't want to carry anything heavy. And so I didn't carry any of my saddleback bags, which broke my heart not to have any of them with me. But I did have this one. And so I would take pictures of this, kind of like your traveling gnome. I would take pictures of this near all these landmarks. And the people on the message forum got a kick out of that. This was the one they made for the second uh, get together, and it is a replica of their water bag. It has a little crossbody strap, even has a little um, guard on the strap, buckle. And again, I'm not going to open this one. It's kind of hard to get back together. So it's got a little strap there and the buckles, and it opens up just like the, um, just like their water bag. So I can't imagine the effort it takes to make small things like this because you're dealing with such small things just to get these little buckles on there and get all the little holes in, in the strap and to stitch on that small of a level. This little handle has stitching around it. You know, just to do that on a machine that's designed to do large items. I, I think these were probably harder to manufacture than the, than the bags. Last time I checked, Saddleback did have a miniature bag for sale on their website. It was a tote, and so if you want to go there and check it out, you might be able to get yourself a small bag. And sometimes these do pop up for sale on eBay or uh, on the Saddleback Leather fan groups on Facebook. Uh, most of us are hanging on to these because they're just so adorable. So I hope you enjoyed that little um, look at my very frivolous uh, unusable miniature bag collection. If you have any idea what some of those tiny little bags from Paris were used for, please let me know because I'm very curious. And uh, if I think of any more, I'll pop in and add to this video. I did find a few more. These are in my bags for sale box. And the first one is this little I think this must be a Whiting Davis. Yeah, this is a Whiting and Davis. And the uh, the Whiting and Davis company made a lot of uh, chain bags and metal mesh bags. And they are a collectible that people collect. This one is in a gold tone. And it's got the um, interlocking metal mesh with a little rhinestone clip. Inside of all Whiting Davis bags, you will see the Whiting Davis label here and made in the USA here. And they come in various conditions. This, this one's in really good condition. It's got the cloth label inside with the logo. And this one is on my Etsy shop. And then I have this cute little thing. Um, it is a tiny, tiny little beaded bag. It has a little loop here so it's meant to hang from something and again I think maybe for a uh, rosary it's got an inter uh, internal clasp pocket inside so it's got three sections why you would need three sections in such a tiny little bag I don't know but it is beaded with glass beads and it is pretty fragile it's it's got signs of age and use, but I still think it's so adorable. These would look really good um, if you have a collection to take like little frames and place one of these inside different frames on the wall in the bathroom. That's just an adorable way to display a collection like this. 
This one measures three inches by two and a half. And the Whiting Davis is the biggest of all of them at four and a quarter by three and three quarter inches. So we can look at those. Those two are in my Etsy shop. That's all I have for now. You guys have a great day. Don't forget, shop my Etsy shop. I always put fun things in there. Bye-bye.